I'm Pastor David Rees of the Redemption Worship Center right here in Somerville, Georgia, 174 West 1st Avenue at Congress. Good morning at 1030. We're coming together again to worship the Lord. Yes, we're going to be careful. We're going to be smart. We're going to wash our hands. We've got sanitizing stations. And we've got our, our seats all and you'll be saved. So I want to encourage you to go ahead and come. If you feel a little bit dry, I want you to go ahead and join to be here at 1030 Sunday morning. You'll be taken care of. Before we go any further, I want to just thank the Lord for the day. Would you pray with me? We thank you, Lord, for the day. Lord, we thank you again for the rain that seems to be so abundant in Georgia. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that you have done a work and the work will be finished that you finish everything you start and Lord I thank you that you didn't leave me where you found me and yet I'm not where I'm going to be but I'm in a journey and Lord I thank you that you're holding my hand all the way I, I thank you Lord that no matter what manner of evil comes up against me I can look up and my redemption draws nigh that when the enemy rushes in like a flood, you raise a standard against it. So, Lord, for every person that's watching right now by internet, whether they're in their office or at home, they may be sitting in a parking lot, mad at the world. Lord, I ask that something be said today. I ask that you would squeeze me out, that deliverance would come. Hallelujah. Lord, open the hearts and the eyes of your people, those that you're calling. In Jesus' name, amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see.
from your heart. I want to see you. Go. speak tonight about the love of God, but I believe that what we really need to know, first, that God does love us with an everlasting love, but I, I believe that we need to be able to discern God's voice. Genesis 3, starting at verse 9, it says, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou should have not eaten? Of course, God was speaking to Adam. And when God called out to Adam and asked Adam, where are you? Keep in mind this thing that God knew exactly where Adam was. He didn't have to go searching. You can't hide from God. You can't go and, and, and cloak yourself and maybe change your appearance and fool God. He knows where you are and He knows who you are. When God said to Adam, where are you? He said, finally realized in his heart. I want to ask you today, where are you in your heart? There's so much noise in this world that you can actually be deafened to the truth. And I believe today that many people are deafened to the truth. They're, they've been scorched in their hearts and scorched in their minds about the things that are in this world. That's why we started with the song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Because many of us today have closed our eyes so we don't even recognize where we are. Some of you know the truth of the love of God and the calling of God and the persistence of God. But you've turned your back. You've turned to the side and now that your eyes are fixed to your computer screen or your smartphone, you're realizing that it could be days have gone by. It could be that years have gone by for some. And I want you to know that today is the day of reckoning. Reckoning who you are and whose you are and where you are. God wanted Adam to know where he was and where he was, he was had died spiritually. He ate of the tree, which he was told not to eat of. And of course, the very first thing he told God, he said, it wasn't me, it was that woman. 
Let me tell you something. When we go before the Lord, when we stand before Him, it's not your woman or your husband or your child that's going to be standing there for you. It's going to be you standing there. I remember years ago, Penny got a speeding ticket. Her, her feet are just a little heavy. And uh, we were always together, and we're still always together. But when we went into that courtroom, I went one direction, she went the other direction. And when the judge called her name, I couldn't go up there with her. I had to remain seated and just simply witness. How are you going to be found? How are you found right now? The Lord knows where you are now. He knows where you're at. Like the individual that may be in the, the parking lot of, of, a, of a convenience store or something right now watching this. It just happened to check in Facebook and you stumbled across this. There's no happenstance. You stumbled across this so that you can receive a deliverance that you need in your mind, in your body, and in your spirit. You're bound. I want you to know right now that Jesus loves you. Outside miraculous visitations and audio voices, audible voices, they have occurred. But I'm going to tell you what, most of the time when the Lord speaks to us, it's not the audible voice that we hear that Adam heard in the garden. Most of the time it's spoken through a friend or maybe someone you don't even know. Most of the time, it's spoken in the Bible, in the Word of God. It, it jumps off the pages and hits you in the heart. Some of you haven't cracked the Bible open in years. And you're living off a residue of what used to be. So you're not getting nourished. You're malnourished spiritually and you're in need of restoration in your hearts. He's holy, just like that song says. He's holy, holy, holy. There's angels that circle the throne from eternity past to eternity future, and they never see him the same twice. And all they say is, holy, holy, holy. Sometimes we get the idea that our, our Lord is, is, is a, uh, uh, a Santa Claus, or our Lord is, is a palsy pal. He's a righteous king. He's the God from everlasting to everlasting. He is authority. He's power. And He's love. The problem that we have mostly is this, is this hostile planet that we live on. This hostile world that we are in. And even if you're in a little cul-de-sac of a little, little town and you think it's so peaceful, let me tell you something. There's a hot... Don't weed you. It, it will turn to weeds. That beautiful lawn will be covered up with weeds. There's a devil loose. The only hope that we've got is through the blood of Jesus. He stretched out his hands and he said it was finished and when he said it was finished, that means that nothing was yet to pay. Completely paid in full. What? The sin debt. He paid the penalty. He paid the fines. He paid what was ever necessary. In mankind. Selling out to the adversary. Affording him what God had given the man. This planet, this world to subdue and to have dominion over. We've had such a difficult time with our streams and to do what we've been doing since 1994. We've done TV since 1994. And these months of trying to get on the Facebook Live and bring a message of truth and, and uh, power and deliverance to you has been difficult. It's been a fight all the way, and I know if there's any pastors that's watching right now, you're shaking your head up and down saying, yes, it is tough. But I'm going to tell you what, it's worth it. You're worth it. You're the reason that we go through this, so that you can understand and again, fellowship with God. Don't turn away. Don't turn your heart away. Let your eyes be open. Let your heart be made filled. 
with the love of God. Our minds can be prompted by God from our own carnal desires or from unclean spirits. In other words, sometimes we, th we think we're doing what the Lord wants us to do and it's just basically our own desires or we're being moved by a spirit. Well, why do you say that, Pastor David? The Bible says don't just believe anything. In fact, don't you believe what I'm saying right now. Get your Bible out and you test everything that I'm saying against the Word of God. Look for it. Go search it out. Get your Bible and hold it open. I'm not so with your eternity. He's someone you can trust with your eternity. When Jesus was preaching on this earth and he, he was the, the teaching the, the law, teaching that he was the fulfillment of the law and the prophet's word, the Bereans stood by and they searched the scriptures for everything he said. They were testing every word that Jesus said against the word of God. And so you should. We take everything, well, no matter what. If it feels good, it must be the Lord. Oh, does you feel the heat? Well, maybe you're standing in the sun, or maybe you're standing under a light where the, the, <laughs> the light heated you up. Or maybe the air was on a little bit too hot. Oh, I got cold chills. Oh, well, maybe, maybe you just uh, got in the air conditioning or something. So many different reasons. Feelings. Don't trust your feelings. Hasn't your feelings fooled you before? I think they have. If you're like me, they, they fooled me many times. You don't go by feelings. We go by the Word of God. The Word of God will build you up. It will cause you to understand the covenant that's been put in place of protection, provision, and companionship. That you're never alone and you're never without. And you're not beneath, you're above. You're not unable, you are able. I'm able to do all things through Christ Jesus. And so are you. Not things that I desire, the things that He desires in and through my life around me. I found that when you try to put your hand under a waterfall or a, a faucet, most of the water is going to go right down the drain. You might as well open up your fingers and let the water just flow right through. You'll stay wet. Don't be concerned about your needs and your desires. Be concerned with what God wants in you, for you, and around you. Sometimes we just get caught up with what we want instead of what He wants. And so our own desires leads us a lot into things, into situations. There's so many. God says at this time they don't even read their Bibles. They don't even know what God's talking about. They don't know what the Word of God says. I'm telling you tonight, discern God's voice. Not because you get a warm fuzzy. Not because you agree with what I might say. Discern God's voice because the Word of God lines up. Or that I line up with the Word of God. Test the spirits to see if they're from God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Too often, we try to remember things that have been said by a well-known preacher rather than what has been said to our hearts through the rhema word of God, through the logos of God. Or in other words, the word of God from the pages of the Bible that spring and find a, a, a home, a habitation within our hearts. The rhema of God, that which we have read, that which we live by, according to what he says. Not what Dr. Joe or Pastor so-and-so says, but what God says. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I want to encourage you tonight. First and foremost, straighten your life. Align your life 
with Christ. Stop trying to do things on your own. Surrender your life to Christ. Let Him in completely. I've taught for years that the amount of power that sin has over you is in direct proportion to the delight. If you like that sin, you're going to fall to it every time. You're not able to overcome it because you don't want to overcome it. And there's many people like that. You want to overcome this, you want to overcome that, but you've got this pet sin that you want to keep close to your heart because you enjoy that. You get something out of that. Now you do away with it. That's what you need to give up. That's what you need to forsake. That's what you need to call upon the Lord for to help you, to give you strength. And He will give you strength. For with every temptation that comes, there's a door of deliverance that comes with it. You've been just taking the wrong door. You may be feeling a little encouraged. You may be feeling a little disgruntled, a little miffed. But I'm going to tell you what. It's not about what you feel. It's what's going on inside you. Jesus, God's Christ, desires you so much that He gave His life on Calvary, on the cross. He took a beating nobody, nobody should take. He, he, he bled and died that, in a way that nobody should have bled and died. But He did it for you and me. It's Him that you need to turn to. I want to encourage you to turn to Him right now. Don't wait any longer. Some of you have been raised in church and you, as soon as you turned 18, 20, whatever it might have been, you, you shot out the door and you wanted to live life. You wanted to get on the wild side. Whatever it is, you wanted to have a good time. Oh, I want to party. 10 years, 20 years later, you realize that you're an addict and there's no party to be found. Party doesn't exist in the gutter or in those cheap hotel rooms. But there's a party going on in heaven. From eternity past to eternity future. Resurrection Day. We celebrated that a couple weeks ago. Let me tell you something. Resurrection Day for you is today. This is your day of deliverance. When Peter asked Jesus, he said, Lord, if that, is that you? He saw Jesus walking on the water. He thought he was a ghost or a spirit or something. He said, Lord, is that you? And he says, it's me. He says, if it's you, tell me to come. Tell me to come to you. He said, come. Boy, Peter got out. He, 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 now, this was a real boat. This is real water like you see it. Lakes around here. Put your foot in water most of the time, probably 9.9.9, .9 almost 100% of the time. I would, I would even say 100% of the time, when you put your foot on water, it's going to go to the bottom. So here's Peter with this in his mind because he was a fisherman. And with this in his mind, Jesus said, come, and he lifted his leg outside the boat, and he saw that water. And he put that foot down on the water. And there comes a time when he had to shift his weight. And he shifted his weight. Guess what happened? The water held him up. When he found the water held him up, he took his other foot and he went outside the boat. And began walking on the water just as Jesus was doing. And he kept walking on the water and kept walking on the water. He was delighted. How? How wonderful could that be? And all of a sudden the waves splashed and hit him and he turned and he noticed the waves. He knew the waves were there. But now he noticed the waves. His gaze, his intent, his, his heart had turned to fear instead of faith with the one who was the water walker. Of course, when that occurred, Peter... Sunk into the water. Sunk into the lake. Jesus didn't slam him. Jesus didn't wait for him to drown, to bring him back to life or anything like that. 
Jesus simply reached down his hand. And of course, I'm sure Peter reached up to his hand. Now, the Bible didn't say that they uh, swam back to the boat. The Bible doesn't say that they, uh, uh, that Jesus walked and, and he pulled and drug Peter through the water. The Bible doesn't say, but I would like, like just David Reeves, I would like to think that they walked back to the boat or maybe even to the shore on the water, arm in arm. With Jesus, with God, nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. The problem that you've been having for so long. The Lord has told you. It's me. He's revealed himself to you. He said it's I. And, he's, and you say Lord if it's really you. If it's really your, your voice. Your spirit that I'm feeling. Then then you come. He says come. And you stick your foot out. And you just stay there. With your foot touching the water. With your foot touching what you deem as the impossible. With your foot solely and squarely planted into that solid place that you're used to. Peter encountered that very same thing. But Peter, the faith in Peter rose up in him and he shifted his weight. And in that shifting of his weight, it was done. Jesus is speaking to multitudes and he was finished and he didn't want to send them away hungry. And so he gathered up some fish and some loaves and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples, those who believe on the word of the Lord. He gave it to his disciples and he says, take this and feed the multitude. They went out with this loaves and these fishes and they brought back baskets. It was just the kids' lunch. They brought back baskets of, of fish and loaves. The miracle was done in their hands. I want to encourage you right now that there's a miracle waiting on you. If you would shift your weight. If you would take the loaves and the fish and go ahead and go. Don't think about that there's not enough. Just go ahead and go and begin to serve the Lord. Don't think about that the water might not hold you. He said come and He's going to support you. He will sustain you. And even when you fall, because most of the time we will fall, He will pull you up out of that water and you'll walk together again. Don't be afraid. Shift your weight. Trust God. Shift your weight. Trust God. Shift your weight. And watch what He will do next. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus as Lord, the Bible says in your mouth. If you don't, if you believe, blessed are you. Because that's the work of the Holy Ghost drawing you to Calvary. Call somebody. Call us. Message us and say, hey, I receive Jesus. I surrender myself to Him. I'm trusting in Him. I repent of my sins. I'm shifting my weight today. And I'm looking for that deliverance that He promises. Hallelujah. Do it now. Confess and message us and let us know that you've received Jesus. Good things are coming your way. Now, Father, for those who are are in that process. Lord, I ask that you just begin to manifest your spirit upon them. Lord, let them know your presence. Let them be drawn to your word. And Father, lift them up. Deliver them from their circumstance right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted to ask you right now to, uh, to begin to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And while you're at it, if you so desire, if you would like to help this little ministry to continue doing what we're doing right now, you can use your smartphone. And in your texting, you can text GIVE, the word GIVE, to this number. 844-817-5853. 
It's safe. It's secure. You don't have to. Um, but if you'd like to, we would appreciate it. We'll bless it. Come into agreement with you about your finances. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God's not so far away that He's not able. His hand is mighty to save. And His eyes are not off of you. That's all the time I've got right now. Remember this. In all you're going, in all you're doing, Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning. Bye-bye.